Our next guest, our VOSA from Pong, Dr. Earl Student at the University of Georgia, also known as the Funky Academic, joins us now to share his thoughts on one aspect of creating regressive politics. All right, Irami, you have got eight minutes. Go. Okay, so we've been right. groomed to measure progress by firsts. We've been groomed because it's not obvious that that the first whatever is necessarily first black this, or first woman mm -hmm. this, or the youngest this. I, I feel like um, it, it, it ha we had to be worked on to think of this as a, as a signal of progress. If for no other reason, then I don't really want to hear about the first uh, you know, coal miner who became a coal company owner who became a billionaire. I want to mm -hmm. hear about the last coal miner who got black lung and what it had to happen in the entire industry to make it the case that like we've eradicated black lung right so i don't want to hear about the first person who got um you know uh, tuberculosis i want to hear about you know how we've almost gotten rid of it right so uh, just the idea that first means trailblazer or even that trails work that way we can do a whole nother mm. segment on that but um <laughs> it, it's already a little bit dubious All right so we have to understand that within systems diversity makes them stronger and this includes even systems of injustice and the strength of a system is not measured by its purity it's measured by how much diversity it can take in and render those parts functional in maintaining what it is the republican party is a lot is a stronger party and probably more conservative one because of the log cabin republicans right so you have to understand that in my view, at least, and I, I you know, I, I read about this, so I think I'm right. White supremacy mm -hmm. is actually made stronger by this notion that progress can be measured by firsts. And when firsts, as often or not, are just people who've assimilated into the dominant structure faster than their alternatives. And in a way that they're kind of the vanguard or the advance guard of assimilation. Not integration that actually justifies all the parts, but assimilation. And that's going to be a problem for those of us, like myself, who actually care about justice for everybody, right? Mm. So... And if you have a hard time wrapping your head around what I'm saying, you can just think about how youth is um, weaponized in the same manner. A lot Give of people thought example. that guys like yeah. What's Give up us an example. Uh, Eric Swalwell or Pete Buttigieg, right? Mm. Like they were. But when you look at Buttigieg, he was just like the fastest guy to get into the wine cave, right? <laughs> that was his special power. <laughs> he got there faster than anybody, and younger than yeah. anyone ever. Right. He like. That was his special power. You could say the same about uh, Macron or Trudeau. But the idea that um, you can be a part of these systems and like you're, you're, you're promoted by these systems because you assimilate into them faster. And so that's actually functionally counter, it's counter revolutionary and counter progressive. And having been a first a lot of things, I can mm -hmm. say sometimes I got the first, I was the first because. You know, I was the most revolutionary. Sometimes I was the first because I assimilated faster than everybody else with more cunning. Right? Uh, <laughs> and so, I mean, where do you think the American obsession with first comes from? Is it from the people? Is it from the media? Who are the people who create this dynamic? Settler colonialism. Hmm. Going Settler expand. Colonialism. Yeah, on, like the, yeah. the trailblazing first is the first. Yeah. So like we associate progress with, uh, you know, going out and conquering places that haven't been conquered before. And you just have to be like the first one there. Nobody talks about Christopher Columbus, what he did. He talked mm -hmm. about he was the first. <laughs> right. Like, we don't talk about like the impact of the Native Amer on, the, on the Native Americans or like where he actually landed. We, we, so I think, I think a lot of our ideologies come from just the apparatus of settler colonialism. That I, think it's, I also think it's really interesting what you said because I'm not sure I quite internalize it this way of diversity strengthens systems, and that includes systems of oppression. So when you have, like, we, we covered this week um, the CIA's new recruitment video, did you see this, where it's, it's a woman, she's a, a, her parents are immigrants, and she's, like, you know, celebrating that she's made in America, and she's CIA, and she's like, I'm a proud cisgendered millennial, and she uses all the right words and, and framing of, you know, intersectionality to talk about the amazing career that she has going for her at the CIA. Um, so when you're talking about how diversity also strengthens systems of injustice and oppression, that's what I was thinking about. Right. Well, I mean, you could just look at it, even if you look at bloodlines, right? So like mm. purity is fragile. We want like the, like if you can accommodate 
the more kinds of different people you can accommodate into an unjust system, the stronger the system. Hmm. Right? So without actually changing the, the, the justice of the system. So look, we need to actually get content in our politics. And this is what happens when you don't have content in our politics. You, you, get, you get spun. And you get spun by the Obama dropping bomb, uh, drones all over the, uh, you know, the, the other side of the world. But he does it as a black man, uh, you know, with kinky hair, kind of. So, like, it's, it's supposed to be somehow better because he's a black guy who does it. Or, like, the difference between uh, Tim Scott as a Republican. I actually think the South Carolina Republican Party is stronger because Tim Scott is the senator from South Carolina. It's not particularly good for black people in South Carolina <laughs> or in the nation that like of, of which you're a federal uh, representative of. But I think it's good for the Republican Party. Right. Hmm. So if you can admit more, if you, the more different types of diversity you can admit and make them a functional part of your own system without actually changing the structure of your own system. Uh, like you won, right? Yeah. And if you want to hear me talk about this more, you can go to my website Perfect. or go to the YouTube channel. Everybody right. and, should and definitely like, do that. Everyone you know, should subscribe I don't say this to the Fake Academic. I want to thank you guys for coming on to my show and getting all gussied up and uh, coming on. You're and, very welcome. Yeah, <laughs> thank, you. thank you for giving me a platform. Coming on to my show. Like, <laughs> I appreciate it. We'll see you later, Army. Great thank to you. have you, Army. Thank you. Take care. Mm -hmm. More rising for you after this.